Guys, 15.5, rowing and thrusters could not ask for a better way to end the open season and to launch us into regionals and the games. I am super stoked that we're getting to see rowing again. And the best part being, this is the first workout that we've seen where you, you can actually win the workout with rowing. Thrusters in this workout are gonna tend to be more of a placeholder. Rowing and your ability to push through is really going to be the key to whether or not you can make it through this workout. Now, to get started, I just wanna talk briefly about technique. There's a whole lot of technique that goes into rowing, right? But what I want you guys to think about is, A, if you haven't taken a look at any technique yet, go check out my website, got a bunch of videos to get you up to speed on actual technique. I don't wanna to take too much of your time and cover that tonight. But that's step one, right? If you haven't f focused on technique yet, go ahead and some, find some videos on technique, spend a day working on it, brush up, and try to find your connection to the machine. If you don't have connection, this is gonna be a really, really rough workout, okay? With that being said, let's take a look at the things we need to focus on. So, we got some major points. First being the sprint start, all right? If you know what the sprint start is, fantastic. Absolutely use it only on the 27 calorie row. If you don't know what the sprint start is, do not try to fake it by using your arms. I'm gonna show you what I mean by that. So come on over to the yurt. A good sprint start uses the legs, right? And the legs are the strongest piece of the puzzle when it comes to the rowing stroke. So a good sprint start should look like this. Okay. Now again, I'm not going to take you what this, through what the sprint start is. You can find a video on that on my website. But what I care about most is that you guys aren't trying to imitate it by using the arms only. Okay. So if this is your sprint start, it's actually going to be a detriment to you. So make sure that when you guys are starting this workout, if you have a sprint start, go ahead and use it. If you've never used it before, and what I just showed you is what you typically do, Drop it and just go to nice, big, powerful strokes right out of the gate, okay? Also a reminder, with the sprint start, it's only on the 27 calories, not any of the pieces thereafter. All right, second thing, one of the back and forth. Talk about the quick release, okay? The quick release is the easiest way to save yourself time and energy in this workout. There are eight transitions, meaning we move off and on the erg eight times, okay? So let's take a look around again. The quick release is going to save you an immense amount of time if it's something that you haven't done before. Simplest thing in the world. You're gonna take your four fingers and you're gonna grab the underside of the foot stretcher. Next, thumbs are gonna go onto the buckles. From there, you're gonna press the buckles out. Now, here's where most people lose it, is they let go and then they try to slip their feet out. The problem being, when you go to get back in, you can get stuck in the strap. So what I wanna see, grab the underside, thumb on the buckle, press the buckle out. Now, continuing to press away on the buckle, pull your toes toward your face. At that point, I have a ton of room in these straps. I'm gonna kick my feet up, and then my heels are gonna come out first. Why is that amazing? Is because now you don't get caught on the machine. And when I come back to the machine, my feet go right back in, toes in first, heels down. I can grab both straps, and I'm back in and ready to go. That is going to save you a ton of time. So if you don't do anything else, if you don't focus on technique, if you don't have a sprint start, at least use the quick release. It will save you time, I promise. Back to the white. You may hear people trying to figure out what the best damper setting is for this workout. Now, there is no right damper setting, okay? Damper setting is not going to matter on this workout. The only reason it does matter is that I want you to row at the damper setting that you are most comfortable rowing at. Don't change it for this workout. A higher damper setting or a lower damper setting than what you're used to is not going to have an impact on your ability to row for calories. What will matter most is that you are comfortable with the resistance that's on the machine and that will be the resistance that you normally use. Okay? So don't start messing with your damper setting yet. It's just not worth it for you. Instead, use the damper you're comfortable at and get into a rhythm for this workout, all right? Finally, consistency to intensity. We talk about this in CrossFit all the, all the time, right? We want to establish consistency before we move on to intensity. What I mean by this is that after you get through your sprint start, I want you to come out of the gates hard. 
settle into a rhythm. All right, play the first two pieces nice and smooth and easy. All right, you don't want to blast through the first two and end up suffering through the final two rounds. So once you finish the first two rounds, now I want you to turn on the intensity when you get onto the earth. When you are on that machine for the final two rounds, you should be pushing. Right? That is where your real work sets come in. And as Dave Castro was talking about in the post game, right? That is where the athletes are really going to prove themselves, is the ability for them to push through the final two pieces. That's where the mental toughness piece comes in. And this is where the true test of the workout happens, is in the final two rounds. The first two, settle into a nice smooth rhythm. Do not blow out, push, but don't waste yourself, okay? Finally, win the workout. On the ear, guys. This workout comes down to how well you know the machine. The thrusters are something that you should definitely settle into a rhythm, come out of the gates. If you are, if you feel very comfortable that you can hit every set unbroken, go for it. I think the top athletes are absolutely gonna be hitting every set unbroken. But if you have even a shred of doubt in your mind, start out, hit some manageable sets. Don't let yourself get down to singles or doubles. That is going to be a killer in this workout. The other killer is going to be if you don't have the technique to connect to the machine. Okay? We don't want to waste any energy that we don't have to while we are rowing through this workout. Okay? Now finally, uh, since some of you may not be comfortable with how many calories per hour is equated to what your normal pacing is, if you're used to watching split or the slash 500 meter that you see on your screen, I'm going to post a picture on Instagram, should be on Twitter as well, at Shane Farmer, but there is a graph that shows you a rough breakdown of split or our 500 meter pace to calories. Take a look at it. It's really a helpful, a, a helpful piece for you as you go into this workout so that you have an idea, okay, what should my pace be if I usually row a two minute split for a 500 meter piece, okay? That is going to tell you where you should start and it's going to help get your mind right and focused on this workout, 15.5. It's gonna be a doozy. I am so stoked to see how it goes. I can't wait for you guys to kill it. Hit me up with any questions you have. Good luck, go get it.